guys. Here we go. Yay! Welcome to this special screening of the Fall Guy. Whoa. Man, I hope I don't become the fall girl in these shoes. But if I do, it's OK. I've always wanted to do my own stunts. Um, I first and foremost want to thank Universal Pictures and 87 North for making this all possible. Round of applause for them. And not only is tonight a special screening, guys, but we also have a surprise for you that I am so stoked. I've just honestly been stoked all day because I've seen this movie already and the hype is so incredibly real. Like, I can't wait for you guys to see it. And the movie actually doesn't come out until May 3rd. So you guys are among the first audiences ever to experience this. And if you didn't know, we're actually live right now in LA, New York, Atlanta, and Miami. So shout out to the 305 where I'm from. But we are coming to you guys live from LA. And I just want to tell everyone in the room here, the two coolest places to be in LA tonight are the Bad Bunny concert in here. And this was free and not a trillion dollars. So like, I think we won, am I right? So I was watching the Oscars this weekend and I actually started to get like really offended that they don't give out awards to stunt performers. <laughs> stunt performers have been around since the early 1900s. They're literally behind the moments in movies that we all love. The biggest moments that make us yell, cry, that we're on the edge of our seat for, that we pump our fists in the air for, and they can literally die while doing it. So it means so much to me that director David Leach made this film as a love letter to them, but really you guys will see it's a love letter to Hollywood at large and to rom-coms, which I love so much. Now, before I bring him out here, for those of you that don't know, David actually used to be a stunt guy. So when he left college in Minnesota, he thought he was gonna be a teacher. He found himself on the set of Fincher's Fight Club and his life basically changed when someone pointed to him and said four words. They said, what about that guy? They were looking for a stunt double for Brad Pitt and they hadn't found one yet. And basically the rest was history. David became Brad Pitt's stunt double in movies like Ocean's Eleven, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Fight Club. And then he went on to work in other major films like The Matrix Revolution and Reloaded, The Bourne Ultimatum, Legacy. Then the guy became a stunt coordinator. And in 2014, he transitioned to directing and co-directed one of my favorite action films of all time and probably yours, John Wick. Yeah, but I always say behind every great man is a great woman, right? And so alongside his wife and producing partner, Kelly McCormick at 87 North, they've basically become Hollywood's go-to action filmmakers. And the last seven years have been absolutely insane for them. I mean, David has directed Atomic Blonde, Hobbs and Shaw, Bullet Train, and 87 North has produced a lot of those films alongside other major action films like Bob Odenkirk's Nobody, that lethal Christmas movie, Violent Night, which I love. Oh, and he also manages to still executive produce the John Wick franchise. So how the man finds time to tend to, which is walkie talkie talk for you know going number two, is beyond me. But I would love if you guys could all join me in welcoming the king of violent, stylish, and hilarious, crowd-pleasing blockbusters, director David Leach. I'd also love to keep that applause going for the beautifully talented producing partner of his and producer on this film, Kelly McCormick. Let's keep it going even more for another producer on the movie, Guyman Cassidy. Fun fact, Guyman was one of the original executive producers of Game of Thrones. And Guyman, I believe you celebrated a birthday yesterday. Is that right? Happy belated birthday oh to Guyman. God. Happy birthday. Thank you. And last but not least, the man behind the magic and all the magic that you're going to see in this film tonight, uh, the stunt coordinator and second unit director, Chris O'Hara. Whoa, it's stunts. 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 All right, here we are. Uh, it's a really, really exciting to be here to uh, introduce The Fall Guy. Um, it's a real personal movie for me, having been a stunt performer for 20 plus years. And um, all of us on the stage who put it together really wanted this film to be not just a celebration of action films, but a celebration of the stunts 
the stunt people behind the scenes, the, the sort of unsung heroes who really do risk their lives and uh, to bring you some of the most memorable sequences in film, um, and the hard work that they put in and the joy they have doing it, and you're gonna see a lot of that joy. Um, so Kelly and I, we worked really hard and, and curated hopefully some really great people, and you know, we brought some other friends along to help us celebrate. Yeah, we wanted to welcome some of our cast members tonight. Um, from everything, everywhere, all at once, the Oscar nominee, Stephanie Shu. Stephanie! Woo! <laughs> from Ted Lasso, Emmy winner, Hannah Waddingham. <laughs> From the Black, Black, Black Panther franchise, Winston Duke. Winston! And from Oppenheimer and Barbie, um, Oscar nominees, Emily Blunt and Ryan Gosling. Hi. <laughs> Ryan, I believe you have a few words for us, yeah? Yes. <laughs> Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. But really nice to meet you actually more than you know because we talked about you every day on set. Every sh scene, every shot, every line, we were like, what is the audience going to want? What don't they want? What have they seen? What haven't they seen? What would they like to see again? So much about you, so it's so nice to finally meet you. <laughs> the, um, one thing I want to point out, I think we're going to show a clip in a second, and I just want to note something, that in this piece that you're about to see, there's a gentleman who buckles me into a car. That's Logan Holiday. He's buttoning, buttoning, what am I trying to Hello. say? Hello. He's <laughs> buckling me into a car for a stunt he's about to do. And then he goes on to do eight and a half cannon rolls, which is a world record. <laughs> and then he pulls me out of the car and, and pats me on the back <laughs> for the stunt that he just did. And you know, in any other movie, you wouldn't know that, but in this movie, you do. You know, that sort of, the lack of recognition, the con contribution that they make uh, to cinema, to some of the, the most, the best moments in this film, the best moments in films in general that we love so much, you know, that, that ends here. That ends here, guys. Okay, and so let's watch this clip and before, see Logan Before Holiday's we get to work. the clip, though, I'd actually love to ask the cast up here a couple questions, if that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you did really we've well we've with that we, whole thing. We can't string a sentence together. Trying to hype together. you up. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> guys, can we just give it up for, like, the most likable cast in Hollywood? I mean, did Mr. Rogers cast this? I'm like, I'm so confused. Like, I love all of you guys. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to give everybody here context because you guys obviously haven't seen the movie. So the movie is basically about Emily Blunt's character, Jody, who's directing her first big action film ever called Metal Storm. And it stars the biggest action star ever, Tom Ryder, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson. Now, Tom goes missing, so his producer, Gail, played by Hannah here, mm, love the pinky, uh, she basically drafts his... Old stunt guy, Colt Seavers, played by Ryan, to fill in for him until they can find him. The only thing that's complicated, though, is that Colt and Jody are exes, and he's trying to win the love of his life back, and then basically everything just kind of goes off the rails from there. So I thought we would start off today's conversation with someone who loves doing things that are kind of off the rails, which is you, Stephanie, in Everything Everywhere All at Once. Um, I have to tell you, it's so cool that you've played two characters named Joy and that you were in a movie called Joyride, because I feel like that's the emotion we feel when we see you on the big screen. Aww. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, you play personal wonderful. assistant to Tom Ryder, Alma Milan. 
And I always joke that I feel like growing up first generation is like the best training for being a personal assistant. <laughs> but throughout your career, Stephanie, ha, what have you noticed about the jobs of assistants? And like, what's kind of so funny about the job that you wanted to incorporate into your performance? Well, I do feel as much as this film is a love letter to the stunt community, it is also a love letter to Hollywood and the people who hold up Hollywood, all the people behind the scenes. And assistants do rule the world. Have you ever heard of a mail room? They know everything. Um, and I, you know, I, I am a huge fan of all the unsung heroes of the world and definitely of our industry. And so it was um, really satisfying and fun to get to have a little pocket of love for all the PAs, all the assistants who are constantly just running back and forth and um, dealing with some really difficult humans. <laughs> yes, which Tom Wright is and your dynamic with him is so funny. Uh, just as funny as Gail's dynamic with Tom too, played by you, Hannah. Hannah, you've become such an action actor. Did you guys know that the day after this wrapped filming, literally the next day she went to film Mission Impossible 8, which is so sick. And I know you've seen a lot. You grew up on boats. Your dad was in the river police. Oh my gosh, you've what? gone in. But this was your first major action film, Hannah. So what was it like seeing these stunt performers oh, pull off these said insane action stunts? film. <laughs> like, ooh, action <laughs> film. Yeah, do you know what? A I, new genre. I feel like in a different life, if I actually, you know, had balls to do it, I would have quite liked to have been a stunt woman. And I actually said this to, to wow. David and Kelly, and then they realized that, you know, I could do a bit of it, but it was quite limited. And so the stunt community probably don't have to worry about me joining them. <laughs> but I loved it. I loved it in all seriousness. The thing I loved most was how much you noticed that the stunt men and women, sorry, a fair amount of tequila last night. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault. I mean, <laughs> um, Can't wait to have that later the, with the, all you um, guys. The, the stunt men and women on our movie, you really notice how much they look after each other. Mm. And that had such a profound effect that it's, it is, like you said, it's all about everybody looking after each other. And for me, it starts with them and trickles back to us. Wow, so beautifully said. Um, one thing I have to ask you before moving on is I love that in a lot of your characters that you play, you're always like eating or drinking something. And I noticed that Gail's <laughs> drinking a lot of soda in this and I want to know what you're actually drinking on set. No, do you know, I was drinking water because I have history with Diet Coke. Oh. Yeah. <coughs> I, I, I didn't feel like <laughs> No, I would have been bouncing off the walls. No, so I was being a good girl. It was, it was water, Your Honor. Wow, water. Okay, well, speaking of drinking, let's move on to the tall glass of water up here called Ooh! Winston Duke. Ooh! Winston Duke got inspired wow. to act after watching an episode of Frasier. I know you did a lot of your own stunts on Black Panther. Um, still can't believe that was your first big major film role. <sighs> Insane. You play stunt coordinator Dan on this. And so I was curious, with real stunt coordinator Chris O'Hara, <laughs> like what conversations did you have with him and observations did you have of him that you wanted to bring to life on screen? Oh, uh, thank you. So <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, there were actually just really great uh, grounded conversations about what does it mean? Uh, what does it mean to have this responsibility on set, you know, and something that needs to happen daily? And it was really communicated by Chris, you know, that the stunt community is, is, is the heart of the film, I thought. That was, my, that was my interpretation. You know, it was a lot about how do we get these guys and wonderful women home safe? Mm -hmm. How does everyone get back to their families? How do we create structures for safety? How do we create structures that keep everything running smoothly? And, you know, building camaraderie, they, they do everything together. You know, they see each other, they train uh, daily, uh, they communicate uh, non-verbally all the time. Uh, lots of farts, I would <laughs> say. Um, <laughs> Hannah, he kind of leads you get me to you. That you get me. <laughs> um, but, but no, it's, it's really that they're the heart and soul of, you know, the, the film set. Yeah. And on a movie like this where action and movement is a strong part of the communication and storytelling, it, it has to be that way. 
Wow. And it's so true because that's so evident through the relationship Dan has with Colt. Like it's such a tight knit friendship and I love that friendship. But I got to say my new favorite friendship that I got to experience recently publicly off screen like you guys did was that between Emily and Ryan. I mean, presenting at the Oscars, you guys deserved an Oscar for that presentation. Yeah. <laughs> Do you call fighting a friendship? Because <laughs> he's like, enough, Emily. We got to squash this. <laughs> um, Emily, you, uh, the E in your name, I think, stands for eye-catching. Like, you are so mesmerizing in films. And I, I'm convinced after seeing this in Jungle Cruise that no one looks better in a hat than you do. You <laughs> clearly elevated the work of so many notable directors, right? And, and, in and hat wearers. And yeah. hat wearers. So that hat was not going to be in the scene, but Whoa, I, really? I mean, I burn very badly in the sun. And so we rehearsed the scene the day before and the hat kept blowing off and Ryan goes, you should wear that tomorrow. That would be really funny in the scene. And it became like the way we first bonded. Yeah. What? That's so cute. Yeah. I love that tidbit. Did playing Jody wearing the hat, there's a scene in this film when she's wearing the hat, guys, where she's delegating and you're just being so badass. Did it make you want to direct it all, playing um, Jody? Maybe the opposite, you know, okay. because <laughs> that seemed like a lot of work and a lot of answers that I needed to have <laughs> available to me, you know. And um, I see what David goes through, even though he just makes it look so effortless and he makes everything so joyful and loving for all of us, but... I can't imagine the tempest that directors have to hold in their heads. I mean, I'm married to one, so I can, because I like, you know, you kind of wake up in the night and I can see the phones on and he's writing notes. And I think when you're directing something, it just, you can never switch it off. So what I'm saying is I'm scared to do that. <laughs> well, you have such range between like Mary Poppins and Sicario that your Definitely. talents, Emily, would be like lethal behind a camera. Well, thank you. Almost as lethal as the love connection between Jody and Cole. And I just have to say, 87 North, what I love about action films in general are great, right? But the romance is always like takes back seat. And what I love about this movie is that it's still very like front row. And I think that that's so beautiful. And Ryan, I was thinking about the title of this film, The Fall Guy, and how sometimes the scariest things we do in life is actually fall for another person. And like how there's so much going on in like Colt Seaver's head, right? <laughs> There's so much going on in your character's head. It's like you're, the fear of actually falling physically as a stunt guy and the fear of like falling for someone in love. And you've been described as fearless. I mean, especially after that I'm Just Ken performance. How did playing a stunt guy change the way that you relate to or look at fear? Ooh, I mean. I'm afraid of that question, so I'm not sure <laughs> if it worked. But uh, no, I have nothing. But look, I was on a kids action TV show called Young Hercules. And, oh really? <laughs> you lie. Uh. Um, and I've basically had a stunt double my whole life. And there's this sort of accepted uh, dynamic where they come on set, they do all the cool stuff, they risk everything, and then they disappear into the shadows and we all pretend as though they were never there. And, you know, everyone else on set gets credit, but there's just some sort of unspoken understanding that they won't. Well, that ends today. Let's ri roll the clip. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, Ryan. One more. <laughs> Almost, Ryan. So excited. Well, um, it's a good thing you're, you don't have a fear of acting because you're lot, the roles that you've embodied are just so aligned, Ryan. And you can only play a character as deep as you've met yourself. So thanks for being an incredible man who's just fully embodied. And like, you're so perfect. You're like almost a woman or something. It's like so crazy. No, I'm just kidding. Take it. So Ryan's also Take producer it. on this film, guys. And uh, I wanted to ask you, Ryan, what it was like working with your own stunt team on this. Because I'd imagine it's not every day that a stunt team works with an actor that's portraying a character in their own profession. Yeah, well, uh, oh, wait, I, I understand. <laughs> I would just Dude. say they cut me off, and for good reason. Um, <laughs> I had the most incredible team between, you know, Chris O'Hara, um, Ben Jenkin, who's here, are you here? <laughs> Logan Holiday, um, Justin Eaton, Troy Brown, uh, 
Sunny Sun, JoJo. It was like, it took like eight, you know, stunt performers to make one fall guy. And there were times where I was like, should we be making a movie or robbing a bank? Because this is kind of the greatest bank robbing team. I and mean, everyone had their own special skill. It was like the Avengers or something. And in fact, they probably, a lot of them probably were the Avengers if you look at their, <laughs> if you look at their CVs. So, you know, it was just uh, to, an honor to be a part of, you know, I've, I've benefited from their work and their help since, like I said, since I started. Um, so to be a part of telling their story and, and in some small way trying to reflect just, you know, how vital they are and how important what they do is and, and, how, and, how, and how much time it is and how it ends right here. Roll the clip. <laughs> Please roll the clip. <laughs> Well, Do we have a clip? <laughs> David, um... <laughs> okay. I was actually reading that one of the stunt guys, Logan Holiday, did something pretty extraordinary on this film, and I was hoping you could tell us more about it before we roll the clip. He did, and we've been mentioning it a little bit, but let's just put you know, a fine point on it. He rolled a car eight and a half times. <laughs> and it's a new Guinness Woo! World Record. So we're very, very excited about it. Chris, do you have any more details about the stunt you want to add? No. <laughs> that was iconic, Chris. But we want to roll the clip. We do want to roll the clip because it's pretty amazing. Let, let's roll the clip. <laughs> He's buckled in. The stunts are ready. Got to be cold. Fall Guy is a reflection of my experience as a stunt performer. Let's go, the show's gonna be epic. There really is a practical element to every stunt we do in the movie. For David to have made this a love letter to the traditional way of doing stunts, it was just beautiful. A cannon roll? It's time for you to start rolling cards again instead of parking them. The day that we shot the cannon roll was definitely the most emotional day I've ever had on a set, and it might have been one of the most tense days of my life. We're making a movie that's an homage to stunt performers. Why don't we make sure that we're doing the best and biggest versions of those, and maybe we can break some records. Let's go. The record-breaking cannon roll was done by Logan Holiday. The previous record for rolls out of a cannon roll was seven rolls. An incredible amount of things have to go right and be perfect in order for this to work. We did the first take. It was still an amazing roll, but it wasn't what we were trying to achieve. But we had one more car. We finally came up with this calculation that gave us eight and a half rolls. Action! Cheers. So exciting for Logan. Eight and a half rolls, and it was perfect. I knew I did a lot of rolls. I had no idea how many, but I had a pretty good feeling that we did it. Logan Holiday is being recognized by the Guinness World Record for most cannon rolls in a car. Eight and a half rolls! Yeah! Let's hear it for Logan Holiday, guys! Okay, yeah. You want to go? My mic is great. Okay. <laughs> Talk first or me? Can we just do it? Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. On behalf, right? Yep, on behalf. Okay, on behalf. Do we have it? Oh my God, you guys, we should rehearse. This is, this is like an audition and we are not getting the part. <laughs> Where is it? Where, you can go ahead. No, you please, you're doing a much better job than I am. <laughs> Will you take over? <laughs> we want to present you with the Guinness Book of Records for the most cannon rolls in a movie ever. And we have a certificate. There, there we is. go. So Logan Thank is being you. presented with the Guinness World Record Certificate of most cannon rolls. So major. Wow, guys.
as well. With that, we can't thank you guys enough for coming to this special screening. I can tell you guys you'll want to see it again. Tickets are on sale now on Fandango.com. And guys up here, I think we should end this conversation tonight with how stunt guys and their stunts, right? Thumbs up? Wait, wait. Can, Lo can Logan say something? Oh, of course. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I would just like to the, thank this whole crew here, you know, if it wasn't for Chris O'Hara and Dave Leach for hiring me and asking me to do this, this would have never happened, and I wouldn't be standing here receiving this award, and, and uh, for all your help, Ryan, at the Oscars, and help with all of our stunt community, you know, I, I, uh, I love this team, and I appreciate it so much, and I want to say hi to my wife, Tyler, and my kids, Kennedy and Zephyr, and just so happy to be getting this award, it's awesome. I think we can roll the movie now. <laughs> we want to thank you all for coming out, and here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the fall guy. Thank you.